It was too late to do a scan in 1985, but he wanted to be ready. He wrote his name and address on the card and placed it in the glassine window on the bag. He was ready. Then he took it to the owner's office as they wanted to use it on one of their construction projects. He returned again to Turkey in October of 85 and again in May of 86, before returning in June of 86 with Dave. So, here was the radar, and here were Ron and Dave, and Dave was already a certified radar worked for many years earlier, whom he knew had funded worthy projects in the past, with the request that he assist with the radar equipment. This gentleman, who asked to remain anonymous, told Ron he would purchase a radar system. His business would retain ownership, but he told Ron he could use it any time he wished. He purchased the SIR-3, a system similar to the SIR-8 that had been brought to Turkey in August. It was shipped directly to Ron's home in Madison, Tennessee, and upon its arrival he immediately took it to the customs office and registered it, placing the customs declarations in both the radar case and the bag which contained the cables and small antenna. It was too late to do a scan in 1985, but he wanted to be ready. He wrote his name and address on the card and placed it in the glassine window on the bag. He was ready. Then he took it to the owner's office as they wanted to use it on one of their construction projects. He returned again to Turkey in October of 85 and again in May of 86, before returning in June of 86 with Dave. So, here was the radar, and here were Ron and Dave, and Dave was already a certified radar operator, having completed the course at GSSI. They immediately took it to the site and did ten passes. <laughs> Now we're going across the front end of the boat and David set those markers in so he can see if there's a relationship between the metal lines of his frequency generator and the parallel uniformly separated timbers that are showing up on the SIR. Boom, 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 farther distant oh, from yeah. it, Dave. Well, can, uh, okay, that's got it right there. Yeah, point, yeah. Right? yeah, this point. All right, let me show you what we're doing. Uh, this is the upper end of the, of the boat. Uh, I've just located the, uh, the very end of it again. Uh -huh. The green stakes represent bulkhead number two. All right. All right. Uh, that's at 63 feet. Yeah. That, those stakes are actually at 66 feet. All right. Okay, now, I, I, but I'm picking up the, where, the, where the, uh, the longitudinal bulkheads double up at the bulkheads. Right. That's why I've got so many stakes that are green. Right. But then when I go in between bulkhead two and three, uh, I haven't got as many bulkheads. Right. You see what I mean? Because they haven't doubled as up. As many longitudinals. Yeah, right. I haven't doubled up. Okay. These are coming out real good. Yep. And uh, if you want to bring the camera over, I want to show you how it's, uh, it should come out on the paper. All right? Just... Okay, we're going to walk over. Yeah. Take a look. Leave it, leave it running so everybody knows that we're not cheating here, right? <laughs> you got it. Cool. Okay. Now, this is the west, the west bulkhead. Okay, can you look through there and... All right. This is the west bulkhead. All right. That was over there. And he walked easterly. Here we start getting a longitudinal bulkheads. Here, 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 here. Okay. Here. You see there how it shows up? Right. So, I mean, that stake is not a figment of my imagination, nor with the frequency generator. Right. This, uh, this uh, subsurface radar shows that there's, there is something underneath there. 
Ron then called John Baumgartner and Dr. Bill Shea to come and participate in the event they had all waited for. Ron got all the permits needed, and soon they were all on their way. John's group arrived and had brought a hot air balloon to use to film the sight from the air. Dr. Shea was on his way, but before he arrived, disaster struck again. John's group had inflated the balloon in the hotel parking lot, and it caught on fire, causing such a commotion that their permits were rescinded. When Dr. Shea arrived, the sight was off limits. He didn't get to see the object of his study for so many years, but Ron did take him to the village and to several of the anchor stones. Well, it looks like it has one, two, three, four, five, and five, and one, two, three, four. This one's got fourteen. Undoubtedly, uh, well, here's the central cross that they're going by, of course. And it's difficult to tell which were the originals and which are the extra ones that have been added later. But here you have five, a little one here, uh, three more here, and here. And then this one matches with this one. There's more here. So we have five down here, five up here, and four over here. So the extras were undoubtedly added uh, at a later time, and you can see there's also been some damage in terms of, uh, of target practice. Right. Now this gives you a nice idea of the height of some of these stones, and it also gives you a nice idea of the location of the, of the uh, hole at the top of the rock. This rock also has the crosses carved in it. They're a little harder to see because of the ridges in the rock, and the natural ridges in the rock. But if you look carefully, uh, there are a number of places. Here is a good example. <coughs> here is another example. Rather, and uh, here is the bottom of the bigger one. The bigger cross comes across here. Uh, so probably if you could examine it more carefully under changing lighting, you would see all of them. And uh, undoubtedly, this stone probably was also standing up. And uh, you'll notice that the distribution of the crosses seems to be lower in the rock down to the, uh, the bottom part of where it would have stood upright. The June 1986 expedition was the last time Dave, John, and Ron would work together. But it certainly wasn't the end by any means. Returning home, Ron took the video of the radar scan, along with the printouts, to GSSI, the radar manufacturer, and he showed it to both Tom Finner, who had come to Turkey in August of 85, and to Joe Rosetta, vice president of the firm. They confirmed the results. The scans showed man-made structure within the formation. Indeed, there is something beneath that rock besides rock. A radar device developed by Geophysical Survey Systems in Hudson was used on the mountain. The device called SIR is used by energy exploration companies to analyze what's below the Earth's surface. According to SIR, Something man-made is under Mount Aridov. This data is not, it does not represent natural geology. It's, it's a man-made structure. These reflections are occurring very per periodic, too periodic to be random nat natural type interfaces. Okay, we are at uh, Geophysical Survey Systems Incorporated in Hudson, New Hampshire. And in front of you here, you see uh, some of the SIRs equipment, subsurface interface radar equipment. And these are other varieties of the same system that we used out in eastern Turkey. Depth within, within a few inches or so, anyway. 
And also notice that you get a parallel scan to this. Down here, you've got the same results, which indicate that these are continuous features. But I think this is pretty dramatic evidence. This evidence I was hoping to come up with when I was out there with you last year. At that time, Ron completed his training on the radar equipment and received his certificate. On November 8th, he returned to the site and did complete scans of the entire ship as well as the surrounding area, reporting the results to officials in Ankara. In December, the decision was officially made. The evidence was complete, and Turkish scientists agreed with Ron. It was the remains of Noah's Ark, officially. The evidence had been scientifically studied. Years earlier, the photogrammetry expert, Dr. Arthur Brandenburger, said the boat-shaped object was man-made based on his years of experience in studying stereo photos. Chemical analysis of specimens taken from the site showed the presence of metals in quantities and types that do not occur in nature. They contained organic carbon, which proved that they were once living matter. Natural rocks do not contain organic carbon. The metal detector scans showed a very distinct, organized pattern of metal beneath the surface consistent with the shape of a ship. These scans were done numerous times using three separate types of metal detectors, all of which confirmed the same results. Laser and other sophisticated methods of measuring performed by scientists at Los Alamos confirmed the length measurement. They showed the object to be exactly 300 royal Egyptian cubits. The subsurface interface radar scans revealed visual evidence of organized structure encapsulated within the boat shape, structures that were positively identified by the radar specialists as being man-made. Turkish authorities, many of them of the Muslim faith, who accept the flood account of the Bible, saw no other conclusion possible. It was a ship. It was in the mountains of Ararat. It was 300 royal Egyptian cubits in length. It was the remains of Noah's Ark. In February of 1987, Ron was asked to appear on Turkish radio and television and discuss the research. And then in 1984, we came out and uh, we found that there was some metal in the boat, which was kind of a surprise. But in Moses' record that he wrote in the Torah, which the Koran, of course, says the Torah is reliable, and uh, in there... Uh, the story tells us that they had metal. Now, Tublacain, who was the great, great grandson of Adam, our fourth generation, used iron and bronze, which meant they knew about alloys, alloy process. So the flood happened in the tenth generation. So uh, it appeared that they had metal, and it's logical that uh, Noah would ship. use it. Yes. And so once we found that there was metal in there, then we got a special metal detector and took this over the ship. Mm -hmm. And by this method, we could find where there was metal in the ship. And it turns out that on all of the rib timbers, there's metal brackets, and on all the timbers that run lengthwise of the boat, there's metal, uh, metal brackets. So we were able to document where the timbers were just by reading the location of the metal from the surface without digging in. He then met with the governor of Ari, the district which contained the ark, and arrangements were made for the official dedication ceremony to be held in June 1987. <laughs> Ağrı'nın e, Ağrı hakkında ve tarihi hakkında bilgileri kapsayan bir kitabımız. Çok teşekkür ederim. Kitabımız size takdim etmekten şeref duyuyorum. 
He returned in both April and May of that year, again scanning the site with radar. By adjusting the frequency of the signal and scanning the same location over and over, Ron was able to obtain data that would produce a three-dimensional image of the structure beneath the surface. 